If we would compost everything that we can compost, we would probably divert anywhere between 20 and 30 percent of the material going into the landfill out of the landfill. So we could divert that. That means that those landfills aren't going to be closed as quickly as they are now. So this is basically what we're using for uh, most of our composting. It's just two by four inch wire that you make in a circle. This is four feet tall and three feet in diameter, which gives us around 30 or 40 cubic feet. So we start on the ground because you want your soil bacteria to come up from the ground. Don't, don't put it on plastic or concrete. And then you start filling it with browns and greens. We retain all of our leaves. You can see some of the leaves around. We put leaves in here. We put kitchen scraps, the materials that we use from preparing food. And we just layer it. And some grass, but we try to keep the grass on the lawn because we like to mulch. But excess uh, green material we put in here. Now, you don't put weeds because I'm doing a cold to warm composting and the temperature is not going to be high enough to destroy the seeds. So you don't want to put any diseased material in here. You don't want to put any animal waste, no cat but litter, dog waste because that also has diseases in it. So you don't want to do that. And you just build this as you, as you go up. So that's what it starts with. You can put a cylinder down the middle to let the air come in. This one, for example, this is one we constructed about two weeks ago. We started constructing it. It's a little shorter. This is a three foot, not a four foot. And this is PCV pipe that's got holes in it. It goes all the way down to the bottom. It's open on both ends. When it rains, you put water in here. It disperses the water all around inside. Uh, this right now is at 120 degrees. So this would be bordering on hot co composting. So cold composting is around 113. Hot composting gets up to about 150. If it gets too high, if it gets up to 160, then you're destroying your bacteria and organisms down here that you want. So if I would dig in here, I'd find earthworms. Uh, you can't see the bacteria, of course. Uh, there'd be protozoa. There are a lot, there's a lot of material, a lot of living things inside of this. Now, the nice thing about cold composting or warm composting is it doesn't destroy your beneficial bacteria. Hot composting will. It's like sterilizing. So, one of the reasons I like warm to cold composting is because I've got the beneficials here that are going to help my plants as they uh, use this material. This is another one. It doesn't have as much aeration. And so if you take the temperature of this one, it's only about 90. This is going to take the longest amount of time to compost. What my husband did was give me a stick and I can punch holes in this to help aerate it. And in hot, you don't add anything to it. That's it. You don't add any more. This one I can keep adding stuff. So I can put some greens in here, add some more browns, continue to fill it up because it's composting all the way to the bottom. This has been going on for about six months. You can see the fungi growing here. Fungi are good. They help to break down materials. But this is, this is one that is in the process of being recycled, re starting over. This is the original one. This is about a four by four by three. So when we started this, we put wire in to make sure we didn't lose any of the materials. And you can see on this some uh, kitchen material. You see some grasses, just different kinds of browns that I have. What I do is take some of my old pots, uh, potted material that I've transplanted. I'll mix that in here. There's plenty of bacteria. It works fine. You don't want to overload it because then it gets too heavy. But we don't turn. So since we don't turn it, I don't have to worry about the weight. Now we had about four to five inches of rain just this week, so it's nice and wet. You, water is going to be one of your determining factors and air. The carbon, green, uh, the, the browns and greens, you want about a one to one, two to one ratio. If it doesn't work, you want to add some more greens. If it gets too cold, add more greens. You've got to put water up to about 50%. You don't want the water come oozing out of the bottom. Then it's too wet. And the nice thing about this one is we can dig out from underneath. So we'll take this, we'll put it through a sifter, and that's the finished product right there. And that material is about a year old.